The following is a special presentation of HBO Sports. Dear Roy Jones, although we've never met, I feel as if I've known you for more than six years. Like millions of other sports fans, I tasted the outrage of that fraudulent decision that denied you an Olympic gold medal. I've always wanted for you to have another chance at that kind of glory. So in that sense, I was with you last Friday night. I know there were skeptics who had questioned your professional opponents, and even your ability. This would be your chance to erase their doubts. That's why you took the gamble of giving up your own title to fight James Tony for his. That's why you put your reputation on the line against a more experienced, more proven, more respected, unbeaten fighter. It was as if you had shouted to the gods of boxing, please Lord, give me one chance to prove I am the best. In matching you with James Tony, the boxing gods and your prayers. You were so fast, oh so fast, so good, you made one of boxing's best champions look like just another sparring partner. You even showed the nerve to showboat and the audacious ability to back it up. On this night, you didn't just win a boxing title, you earned universal respect. We can put the memory of Seoul, South Korea to rest now because you've finally been validated as the best. For those of us who were fortunate enough to witness your victory, we can forever say that we were there the night Roy Jones Jr. fulfilled his quest and quieted his recurrent nightmare. Sincerely, a boxing fan. Grand in Las Vegas, 13 days AGF after George Foreman. And once again, this is the scene of another momentous boxing battle. The super middleweight title clash between James Tony and Roy Jones Jr. Two unbeaten boxing champions meeting in the prime of their careers in a match toward which the days have been counted by the boxing public for as much as a year. James Tony against Roy Jones Jr. in this ring, and we were there. Hello again, I'm Jim Lampley. If you're a boxing fan, you know by now that James Tony against Roy Jones on Friday evening, November 18, brought the first loss to the record of a man who going into the ring had the longest unbeaten streak of any champion in the sport and brought to fruition the talent of a man who had long been trumpeted as one of the greatest prodigies to have entered boxing in recent decades. Larry Merchant, in the moments before the fight, you told us that most of the questions surrounding Tony Jones went to Roy Jones Jr., by far the lesser known quantity. Did he, with his performance here, answer all those questions? Yes, and yes again with a lot of exclamation points. The questions about Jones were basically this. Was he a superstar, which his talent, his raw ability, the quickness and the power suggest that he could be, or was he a fraud because he had consistently refused to fight the best and baddest fighters out there, which James Tony always had done as a champion. Coming in here, we didn't know if he had the right stuff and the left hook to put any hurt on an outstanding fighter. He answered yes and yes and to all those questions, and he turned what was supposed to be a fight into a terrific solo performance. 
virtuoso performance and justifiably most of the attention in the aftermath of the fight goes to Jones. But in the days leading up to the fight and even afterward, a lot of attention has been paid to James Tony's gargantuan struggle to get down to the 168 pound weight limit and then the bizarre ballooning process by which he added 17 pounds to his weight in the 28 hours between the weigh-in and the time when he entered the ring. Gil Clancy, given all of your experience as a manager and a trainer working with fighters who had to condition themselves and make weight, do you think that what happened to Tony had anything to do with what happened to him in the ring? Well, absolutely. Uh, I've never heard of a fighter putting on 17 pounds overnight. I mean, I had a fighter, Emil Griffith, that was a welterweight champion. He fought Dick Tiger for the middleweight championship of the world. I brought him in at his most efficient weight, which was only 150 pounds. Uh, for this fighter to come in and put on those 17 pounds, it had to blow him up, and he knew he was fighting a fast, fast fighter, and it showed in the ring. He was completely outsped for the entire fight. How big a factor was it? Answer that question for yourself as we go back now and look at all 12 rounds of James Tony against Roy Jones, the hotly anticipated fight of the year. Friday night, November 18, at the MGM Grand. Tale of the tape. And you can see that James Tony weighed in at 167, Roy Jones at 168. They're similar in age, similar in height, similar in reach, but the big story. James Tony supposedly went to bed last night, eight hours after weighing in at 167, and weighed 183. Tonight, before leaving his dressing room to come into the ring, he stood on a scale, and you can see that if this scale is accurate, James told us the truth. He weighed 184 pounds, 17 pounds over yesterday's weigh-in level as he got ready to come into the ring tonight. That's an astonishing One rising weight, Gil. Table. I don't know if any young fighter that's ever had to do anything like that. Take a look at the punch stat numbers here. I don't know what these mean, except you can see that Tony is a busier, constantly busier and more efficient fighter jabs Jones uses the jab mainly to set up his hooks he's not really interested in doing any serious business with the jab but it's his hooks that are, will determine the outcome of this fight rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside score Harold Letterman James Tom and Roy Jones jr. will box tonight using the rules of the International Boxing Federation 12 rounds there is no standing a count no three knockdown rule. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the last round. Only the referee can stop the fight. And in case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, and that cut causes the fight to be stopped, we go to the scorecards after six rounds have been completed. Before that, it's a technical draw. Jim. Packed house at ringside here at the MGM Grand. And Roy Jones Jr. chooses to enter in a mock tuxedo. You see the designation there, former IBF middleweight champion. He gave up that championship, Larry, for the right to come up eight pounds and challenge for James Tony's super middleweight title. Well, for him, this is his entire career. It's a fight he's been aiming for since he got robbed of that decision at the Seoul Olympics. I call his style, Gil, as a kind of a brilliant amateur. He can get away with doing things because of his quickness that very, very few fighters can. Sort of like Muhammad Ali or Hector Camacho, a few others I can name. One thing we knew about Ali was he had the right stuff inside when all was said and done. That's what we have to find out about this man tonight. Well, that's what we're going to find out, Larry. Roy Jones himself doesn't know what he's going to do in that ring. Very, very unorthodox, but he has great balance. He's a great athlete, and things just happen for him. Roy Jones Jr. is unbeaten. 26 fights, 26 wins, 23 knockouts. You see he's listed as the number two IBF super middleweight contender. He is regarded as having spectacular knockout power with either hand. Well... You know, they say that the punch that hurts you is the punch that you don't see. He throws his punches from, from such odd angles that he can nail you and you just don't see the punch. And now Jones may be forced to play a little bit of a waiting game in the ring. But here comes James Tony. 
we've, we've got to talk about that weight. I've never heard of anything like this, particularly for a young athlete. When I was playing football, I knew of guys who had a, lost eight pounds in a workout in, in, the, in the severe. They get it all back by the afternoon. But to put on 16 or 17 pounds in such a short period of time, can it do him any good? I, I think it can do him a lot more harm than good. I think you're supposed to be your most efficient weight, especially when you're fighting a guy that has a lot of speed. You don't want to give up any kind of speed. And putting that much weight back on could certainly slow him up. He may look like he's fighting with cement shoes on. You know, Ray Leonard said an interesting thing before. The conventional wisdom has been that Jones had to get Tony Hurt in trouble early in the fight because Tony would come on. But now because of this weight situation, we don't know which way it's going to go. Well, I know that the Jones is always dangerous very, very early. I've seen a few of his fights and he lands that left hook from way outside, which is an unorthodox thing to do because he does leave himself a little bit open. But the first time he hits those, the other the opponent with that left hook, you can see the surprise on their face. Like, what the heck is this? You saw Tony waiting briefly as he refused to enter the ring until the address system would play his entry music. Now here he comes. IBF super middleweight champion James Tony. Since he won the middleweight title from Michael Dunn in 1991, this has been the most active major champion in the sport of boxing, Larry. Yeah, and that's why he's gotten better and better. The only champion I know of who's been really active during his reign, other champion, is Julio Cesar Chavez. In his prime, when he was great, he, he kept active, fighting fights in Mexico none of us even ever heard of, and it's paid off for him, and it's paid off for Tony so far. One more footnote on the long battle to trim down to the 168-pound weight limit and then the massive weight gain in the 30 hours since. According to Nevada State Athletic Commission, Dr. Flip Homansky, rapid fluid loss followed by rapid fluid intake would make someone more vulnerable to bruising and cutting. So we'll have to watch and see if that holds true for Tony tonight. James Tony's record in the ring, 44 wins, two draws, 29 KOs. We've seen him win from every conceivable circumstance by come from behind knockout, by come from behind decision, by early knockout, by late knockout, you name it, he's done it. And now let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated along with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Bud Weiser, proud to be your Bud, present World Championship Boxing. This bout is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation with the approval and sanctioning of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Chairman Dr. James Nave, Commissioners Nat Carasali, Luther Mack, Dr. Elias Ghanem, and Crispin Rivera. The executive director is Mark Ratner. IBF supervisor at ringside, Bobby Lee Jr. Chief Medical Officer in attendance, Dr. Flip Homansky. Attending physicians are Dr. James Wishgame and Dr. Robert Boy. The keeper at the bell, Al Bicek. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Jane Broadfoot. The scoring for this bout will be done on a 10-point must system, and the three judges assigned are Glenn Hamada, John Stewart, and Jerry Roth. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action working for the 104th time in a world title bout, referee Richard Steele. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand Garden, here at the MGM Grand Hotel, Casino, and Theme Park of Las Vegas, Nevada, somebody's O must go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to Twelve rounds of boxing for the super middleweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with gold trim, and weighing in at 168 pounds. This 1988 Olympic silver medalist has a professional record of 26 and 0, 23 by knockout victory. Tonight, he steps up from the middleweight division, where he has already captured a world title and puts his perfect record on the line. 
Ladies and gentlemen, from Pensacola, Florida, introducing the challenger and former middleweight champion of the world, Roy Jones And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black and weighing in at 167 pounds. He brings his outstanding record into the ring tonight of 44 victories without a loss. He has scored 29 KOs and has two draws. And while compiling that record, he has captured two world titles. Ladies and gentlemen, from Ann Arbor, Michigan, presenting the two-time world champion and reigning super middleweight champion of the world, James. Uh, lights out, Tony. All right, I spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. I'm cautioning you again. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands. Good luck, Jim. When we get. Unbeaten champions meet like this. We often get a kind of creative friction that bursts out into the pure flame. That's what we're looking for tonight. One quick note, Gil and Larry. I was told late this afternoon by a source I trust from Roy Jones Jr.'s camp that he hurt his right hand in sparring a month ago, has not hit the heavy bag with the right hand for more than a month, has not put a power shot at a sparring partner with the right hand for more than a month. So he comes into the ring tonight with the right hand a mystery to him and those around him. Putting more and more emphasis on the left hook that does the most damage for him. He's been throwing triple left hooks in sparring to make up for the absence of the right hand. And he throws a right hand there, seemingly with conviction. And, and you, uh, you notice when the James Tony stalks an opponent, or when he jams, he has a tendency to drop that right hand, which can be very, very dangerous against a good left hooker like uh, Roy Jones Jr. Here's that quick left hook, again, from an unorthodox angle. Tony has blocked all of those punches. Jones short with the right hand there. Tony looking confident, if a bit pensive so far. Willing to wait and see what Jones has got here at the outset. He's keeping his hands up and he's putting his putting pressure on Roy Jones. And again, you can see the quickness of Jones, that side to side movement. Jabbing and hooking with the left hand. Only a couple of right hand shots so far by Jones. Nothing has landed. Tony has been cautious and measured in his approach. Right hand misses for James. Hunter, to get out. Hunter, to get out. Double left hook by Jones. Right hand was a glancing blow. James Tony told us he would be able to counter because he didn't think that Jones would be able to resist taking the lead in the fight. Up to this point, Jones has been doing all of the leading. There's a quick right hand by Jones, and it looked okay there. here in round one. He's been able to double and triple up with the left hook. Oh, well, good. He's catching that hook. That's the shot. 
and we got to take away from it the hook. When you catch the hook, come back with your hook. Catch the hook, come back with your hook. Keep cutting the ring off of it. Make you miss them shots. Mess with the right hand. You, 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 you can twist on the right hand, count on the right hand. But keep that hand. He ain't getting in already. Let's go sit that hook up. You'll catch him clean sooner or later. Way to work. Deep breath. Okay, we're ready. So you stop pulling, baby. Way to work. Way to work, champ. Keep control. You heard Bill Miller talking to James Tony. Watch the left hook. Just watch the left hook. And when you catch it or duck it, throw your own left hook. Good advice, Gil? Absolutely. If, if he could nail Jones, if Jones misses that left hook, doing an awful lot of damage. And there's, there's Tony trying to get off that big left hook. It was blocked by Jones. Tony looking like he wants to open a little bit more in this round after an exceedingly cautious first. Go hold him, go hold Great. Step back, step back. Couple of body shots by Jones. One sounded like it landed on the cup for Jim. And again, uh, Tony carries that right hand across his chest. He's not protecting his chin. He got it up there, though. And Jones managed to thunder one left hook behind Tony's guard, but most of these punches being blocked on the gloves by James Tony. But again, if he throws seven and two get through, he's still scoring some points. Tony has to punch back. Tony hasn't found many openings. And there was the quickness of Jones again. He made Tony miss and nailed him with two of those unorthodox punches. They come from all angles. Right hand to the body by Jones. Finally, James Tony gets through with a left hook to the chest of Jones. That drove back into the corner. Good right hand lead by Jones. Again, Jones makes a lot of very tactical errors, but he has such fast reflexes that he can get away with making mistakes. Oh, don't hold him down. There's that quickness. Fast hands. Leaping with the left hook. Opened the glove as he threw the right hand to the body. Jones hurt the right hand against Bernard Hopkins a few fights Punch back. Get out. Don't hold him. Sneaking in the right hand after Jones had landed over the top. Break, step back, step back. Again, these two fighters, completely different styles. Tony is just trying to walk in, put a little pressure, physical and mental, on Jones and Jones. The left hook got behind the guard, Gil. Jones wobbled Tony just slightly with that left hook. Shots up a little bit. Uh, so when you can catch him when he comes in. Uh, uh, especially when you're twisting with the right hand, back with the left hook. Here's the flurry at the end of the round by Roy Jones. None of those was a clean punch, but they are scoring punches. They will count in his favor. His quickness is decisive through the first two rounds. On his head, let's go. Keep the control just like this. You're going to do. Keep the control. Stop pulling. Stop pulling. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Big disparity in punch output in rounds one and two. Would you tell James Tony to step up the act level, Gil? He's going to have to do something. He can't walk in and walk in without throwing punches. Low blows by Jones. Steele didn't say anything. 
still the edge in quickness is decisive, as Larry put it. Quick, quickness and reflex, Jim. I mean, he makes Tony miss, and he's so quick countering. Get out the road. Get out. Showboating by Jones. He attempts faith, think. Left hook, and down goes Tony. You know, his seat never hit the, hit the canvas. But they're going to call it a knockdown anyway. I agree, Larry. I don't think it was a knockdown. He wobbled back, but he did not go down. Reggie Johnson knocked him down in 1991. This, if it is officially scored as a knockdown, is the second time in Tony's career that he's been down. Crowd on its feet. Jones with plenty of time left in the third. Up to this point, it looks like an added weight that they put on uh, on uh, James Tony is uh, an albatross around his neck because Tremendous he's very, very slow. Or maybe his Jones is just that fast. But he's uh, being completely outsped in this fight so far. Jones looks fast against everybody, but he certainly looked faster against Tony than some might have suspected. Good counter by Tony. Jones says, come on. That was Tony's best punch of the fight. He caught Jones coming and nothing happened. Right hand Tony. lead by Jones. Punching it out. Unorthodoxy playing in his favor now. He's fighting with so much confidence, Jim. Right, step back, step back. Well, if he didn't use the right hand in sparring, he's using it here and so far fairly effectively, although most of the heavy metal has come from the left. Yes, but he has, again, he has thrown that right hand to set up the left hook. Sweeping left hook by Tony. Come on, punch to get out, yeah. And more quickness inside from Roy Jones. Good defense there by Tony, who was able to duck and slip. Yeah, but it's okay to say no, 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 but they're still scoring points for Jones. part of the debate going on with hand gestures and fists. We don't see from that angle whether Jones indeed went down. Perhaps we'll have another angle that we can't see it. Here it'll tell us right now. You see his, his behind never hit the canvas, Gil. Absolutely. I did not think it was a knockdown. He did stagger back, but he didn't go down. Harold Letterman, let's open Harold quickly. Why might that have been scored a knockdown, Harold? Jim, if the ro if the ropes are holding you up, if the ropes wouldn't have been there and you would have hit the canvas, that's a knockdown under the rules. So Absolutely. in your view, was that a knockdown? A knockdown for sure. All right, round four begins. And given the knockdown, you've now got at least the possibility that Tony's four points behind on all three scorecards. Not necessarily, but it's possible. Well, he's digging himself a big hole right now. Uh, we've Punch seen him come back in the back. past from, from bad cuts, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, he can't get too far behind with this will of the wisp he's in there with. You heard Bill Miller tell him to keep throwing the right hand, and he was trying it there, but he missed wide. Well, he, in my opinion, he should be concentrating on the body. Another left hook by Jones. That one didn't stun Tony, but it prevented him from throwing anything in return. Tony just not able to counter effectively, Gil, except for one time so far. Solid left hook there. Tony talking to Jones. Again, what talking doesn't do you a bit of good. And the other guy's piling up points. Is he ever?
Tony just looks like he can't get off. Whether it's Jones' movement that's bothering him or with the extra weight that's bothering him, something's bothering him because he traps uh, he traps Jones and gets beats to the punch time after time. Well, there was a good counter right, and he came with another right cross behind it. Jones throwing right hand, then left hook combinations, and a right hand over the top from Tony. And Tony just beginning to get off a little bit here in round four. No holding. Work, step back, step back. No holding. Tony is getting closer to finding the range right now. You can just see him getting closer and closer to the mark. Getting more active. Break, step back, step back, you hold it. Good left by Jones as he wound the right hand up. He lands three or four more punches. The hand speed display continues spectacularly for Roy Jones. Just unorthodox punches. Punch just, punch Tony doesn't know where he is half the time. Back, back, where back. Jones is in there. Hey. We're getting a little closer to him now. We're getting a little closer to him now. When you hit him with the right hand, come back to the hook. Woo! Having fun, baby. Getting a little closer to him. The reaching him was wrong. Hit him with the right hand, come back to the left foot. But jab your way in. You know what you're doing. Way to work. Way to work. He's slowing down something. Harold Letterman, your scorecard after four rounds. Four rounds to nothing, 40 to 35, Roy Jones Jr. He's really given James Tony a beating so far. He certainly gets an extra point for the clean knockdown in round three. Roy Jones all the way. I've got Roy winning the first four rounds just as well. And I have as well. Tony said to Bill Miller, boy, I'm having fun. Only a prize fighter after taking some of these punches could say that. Give him up, Tony. They trade shots to open round five. But again, uh, Jones landed the last two punches of that exchange. And the first two punches there. James has nothing to throw. Two more left hands. His unorthodox movement and the unorthodox punches are completely befuddling James Tony up to this point. Right hand, left hand combination by Jones landed. Tony landed the left in return. Tony starting to snap to it a little bit, but still outgunned in almost every change. Tony has got a punch to the body. He can't. That's where those punches belong. Stay downstairs for a while, then that head will come to you. himself so far down that he's got to go for a late round knockout against Jones. That's going to be tough because of Jones's quickness and defense. And if Jones is himself uh, comfortably ahead, he can certainly kill the clock. Big left hook. Big left hook by Jones. Two left hooks. Tony pretending not to be hurt, but he's wobbled. Now James lands a right hand in return. Tony trying to take advantage of the chance opened up by Jones's aggression. Jones will not let Tony into this fight. Tony lands a hard punch. He comes back with two. Break, break, break. Roy had to end it with a right hand right there. Just missed. Right hand counter by Tony, but Jones was moving away with the punch. 
Here's where Joe Tony has to get off when he has him on the ropes. He's got to bank to the body immediately. He's got to be busier. That left hand landed, but Talk it was a glancing blow. Talk about unorthodox. He spun around and left, landed the uh, left. Jones is supposed to be the unorthodox guy. Solid left hook by Jones. And you saw James Tony's head snap to the side again. Tony's got the lug sail out. He's starting to go to work. But Jones continues to box circles around him and land the heavier shots as well. Jones certainly answered some questions about whether he has the right stuff inside him in that round. Well, he got nailed with a couple of punches, Larry, but again, he would not allow Tony to take the edge right back. Put him in. Get it in, Beth. There you go. You're doing good. The sixth round, baby. Coming in the six. Coming. Okay. Here, here. Coming in the six. Gentle one. Once again, let's watch fast hands if we can see him, because James Tony doesn't uh, apparently able to see him. There's a perfect example of an ortho unorthodox punch coming when you leave when you don't expect it Gil and you don't see it those are the ones that really can get to you James Tony has been talking about going up to heavyweight he said the hardest part of every fight is making weight it's only supposition but you suspect at this moment that making weight this time took a lot out of James Tony I'm not ready to to take any credit away from Jones because what Jones is doing here is is just dictating everything on his own and I'm not sure it has anything to do with the weight yet. 61% landing percentage in round five for Jones 37 out of 61 mostly power shots. It's terrific stuff. took on the button by Roy Jones Jr. And you notice that Jones doesn't set things up with a left jab. That's the unorthodox part of his style. He doesn't set things up. But he'll move with his feet and all of a sudden leap in with that left hook. And it's very, very effective. But again, by doing that, he leaves himself open for a split second. But so far, nobody has been able to take advantage of it. Nobody that he's fought. He's so quick. Hunter, get out. Hunter, get out. Keep him up. Let him go, let him go. Again, crack leg exchange. right hand. Jones lands the last punch. Last tag. Roy Jones. Break, step back, step back. Tony's remembering now to go to the body when he gets Jones against the ropes. And you notice that the Tony just didn't even try to throw a jab. He just paws Break, out step back, it, but, step back. Uh, Again, it's the footwork on that left hook, that fast left hook. Crowd ooing and dying with yet another left hook. Same thing every time. There's no, no jabs involved. He doesn't have to feint the jab. He just leaps in quickly. Gets an angle and bang, right, right in there with that left hook. And if you had told James Tony two days ago that Roy could do that, he'd have said, no Punch way. Punch it out. Punch it out. Right, step back, step back. But you're right. He's done it all the way through tonight. Let's keep on. Don't time up. Come on. Keep on. Put your arm back. Right, step back, step back. Come on, you guys. Let's work. There was a question again where Tony was just too slow getting off and instead of Jones waiting to block a punch, beat him to the punch. He's back in the, back on the corner again and again, who gets off first? Jones. Halfway through the battle for James Tony's IBF Super Middleweight Championship so far. A spectacular virtuoso performance by the challenger, Roy Jones Jr. Oh! Now. 
you got to cook this. I want you just, just some of the jab, some of the hooks you know now from the inside with it. Instead of outside with a stick. It's time to right. so come to it. Right. It's time to put a little more pressure. Put a little pressure. Um, we got him on our territory now. Coming into the championship round. That's right. Being through the middle. Mm -hmm. Through the middle. He's flicking for everything you do. Right. Every time you flick at him, man, he's going for it. All right. Okay. Although hey, we're right only there. halfway through the scheduled two rounds, we're already at that stage where James Tony looks like he's going to have to do something dramatic to get back into the fight. It would have to be very, very dramatic, Larry, like a knockout. We're counting that no knockdown. He's already. Uh, Seven points behind, and he's got right, six rounds back, to, back, to catch up. He's done it in the past, but maybe not against fighters the quality of Roy Jones Jr. He was Hard down on out. points when he Hard knocked out none in that month to win the world middleweight championship in 91. Come on, work he needed out. to work. knock out Tim Littles in a specific round right, because of back, a bad seven, head seven. cut to win that fight, and did it against a fighter who'd never been down or out. So it's not out of the question, but this is still all Roy Jones as round seven begins. But again, um, again, solid left. Tony in a little bit of trouble. Again, uh, Jones is really never directly in front of, of uh, James Tony. He throws angle shots, and Tony really don't, doesn't know where the punches are coming from. There was a foul by Roy Jones. We have the rope and use that for leverage. Right, step back, step back. Don't hold the rope. Don't hold the rope. And Steele tells him not to do it. James Tony right, right. just completely somebody, somebody. befuddled by Jones's speed, unorthodoxy, <laughs> quickness. Again, Tony, he's, he's playing hide and seek with Tony in the ring. We're in the ring, they're both right, inside, somebody. but half the time Tony doesn't know where he is. Yeah, waiting against the ropes. What in the world can Tony do, Gil, to nullify the effectiveness of Jones's left hook? The only thing he can do is start, start banging to the body. When, he, when you have a guy against the ropes, Punch don't even Punch think. Throw a straight don't right hand to the body and try to come back with a left hook. Don't You're going to hit something, even if you hit his arm. But by, if you hesitate, hesitate, wait for an opening, he gets off first and beats him to the punch. Yeah, you can see, you can see Tony hesitating. Good counter there by James Tony, but it's it's hard to find a round here that you might have given to the champion. What other middleweights could throw combinations with that hand speed, Gil? I, I, I would have to go back a long way, maybe to the day, to Sugar Ray Robinson. He can throw punches that fast and that effective. Work, work, work out. Work your way out. Punch. Your hands are free. Pull your arms back, Roy. Pull your arms back. And remember, this is 168 pounds, eight pounds up from the old middleweight limit of 160. Uh, again, again, uh, Jones comes back in the exchanges. Good left hook by James Tony. Best punch of the fight for Tony, the left that ended round seven. You hear me? Especially when we're inside. We got to take this one. We're on our territory now. We got to make our move. Harold, seven rounds, your score. Larry, 70 to 62, seven to nothing. Roy Jones, I never saw a super middleweight throw six, seven, eight punch combination of key throws. He's absolutely beautiful. Unless you have to, okay? Here you go. He weakened his legs, man. Yeah, he can't it. move. I know, he, he can't he move, though. You can hit him all day, keep That's it at your here. range. Right, to work. Okay, let's go. Let's make a move now, champ. Let's go. Rounds left. So far, 
both fighters have caught some stiff punches, but they haven't they haven't really hurt each other that badly yet. I was surprised even Tony landed a few good straight punches. They just wiped right off of Jones. I thought that Tony was hurt a couple of times during the fight, Larry. Not seriously, but hurt. How about now? How about he's, right now? He's just being completely overwhelmed. And I think a left hook to the body hurt James Tony badly to set this up. Jones landed a wallop to Tony's ribcage. James Tony hasn't thrown a punch since that body shot. And look how cool Roy Jones is. Jones has knocked men out with body shots. Glenn Wolf in the first round, for instance. And now Tony begins step to throw back, again, step step but tried to counter, but again, that those reflexes of Jones, just nothing's there when you punch at it. Two more left hooks right on the button. And the thing that amazes me, you know, you say Jones is a boxer. He does this without using a left jab. <laughs> Both men have dispensed with the jab completely. And this is just going to be a slugfest the rest of the way. Isn't it? James Tony has always has had a good left jab. Outside, he proved it in the Prince Charles Williams fight. But again, uh, he's not using it. He's just walking in, Gil. There he paused with it a little bit. But the snapping left jab is gone from Tony's arsenal. Just walking in. We thought Jones would move more away from Tony, but he's really been contemptuous of Tony in the last couple of rounds. Yeah, he, again, he can, he can go on the ropes. No matter where he goes, Tony just can't hit him. Sledgehammer right over the top by Tony. Lancing blow. Didn't get all of the target. Again in that exchange. Last tag by Roy Jones. Tony showing some assertiveness now, but he took a lot of this round off after he took that crushing left to the body early on. There's a left hook by James Tony. You get off first. Don't wait for him. All right. Round nine begins. You saw the champion breathing hard in his corner. Right now, this 168-pound championship belongs to Roy Jones. It's up to James Tony to win it back. Still hasn't uh, spoken to uh, James Tony with any real sense of urgency, saying, "James, you're going to have to do something big." Uh, you know, he's talking very, very matter of factly. Slipped by Jones, and Tony did, did not take advantage. Tony a little more cautious than he's been in other fights. And Jones's left hand has shown us the reason why, over and over. You said before the fight, Larry Merchant, that Roy Jones Jr. was a mystery. How much of the unknown is left now? Well, beyond any question, he's answered a lot of a lot of those questions. 
It's in his grasp. Get out. Break step back, step back. Looks as if Roy Jones is taking a round off. He may take the next, the rest of the fight off, Gil. Jones. Left took over the top by Jones. Tony trying to stop, but not punching his way in effectively. Short left took by Jones, the more effective of the two punches there. Tony's sweeping left. Missed badly. Look at that footwork of Roy Jones, side to side. Again, last tag by Roy Jones. He lulls you to sleep and then he tries to put you to sleep. So far, the mongoose is too quick for the cobra. By this time, maybe James Tony's taken off about seven or eight pounds. Larry, so maybe he a little quicker for the rest of the fight. Hard to see so far what he could find that would do the necessary damage to Jones at this point. Well, one big left hook, a right hand on the chin, uh, should help at this weight. Uh, and the other guy can do a lot of funny things. You can just see the quickness of Roy Jones. Constantly moving, constantly fainting. Don't hold him! Watch him get out of there! Pull him back, pull him back! Roy, step back to him, step back! Tony, so cool, so non-existent as he gave the first two rounds away. Then he got knocked down in the third. And since that time, Roy Jones, to our eyes at least, has seemed to simply pile up the points. Again, uh, Jones is just such an unorthodox fighter. A couple of times in the fight when he's against Rose, he actually pulls his head back, which is a fundamental no-no, but he gets away with it. Jones again stepping in with that left hook and then gone as Tony looked around to find it. Right now they're cooling each other off with those missed roundhouse punches. Punch to get out of there. Punch get out. Break. Step back. Don't hold him up. Again, uh, Tony moves him into the corners and against the ropes, but then he allows Jones to get off first. Yeah, he's chasing, 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 but nothing happens. 
Let's see who gets off first. Come on, work, work. That was a dangerous left hook by James Tony. Thunderous right inside by Jones. Jones is looking at the clock. That could be an indication that he's starting to get a little tired. Come on, let's work this side. Work this side. Pull him back. Pull him back. Chopping right hand for Tony. Jones was moving away with the punch. Wasn't a very effective punch. your score. Larry, I thought James Tony stole the 10th round. Roy didn't do a heck of a lot. Nine rounds to one, 99 to 90. Roy Jones, he is so quick. He's moving so nicely, landed so many great combination punches. You just can't take it away from him. James Tony's going to be a dynamite finish to win this fight. Dynamite is the operative word. He's going to have to throw a stick of dynamite in there to blow this man up, but I'm not sure that would do it. Well, the only thing, in my opinion, now that can do it is a knockout. Roy Agreed. Jones only threw 32 punches in round 10. That drops way down from his previous punch output. It was in the 11th round when Tony scored the dramatic comeback knockout of Michael Dunn back Come in on, 1991 that won him the middleweight championship. But Dunn was not the kind of power puncher that Roy Jones had. You heard the advice to Jones in the corner, be a needle in a haystack. He, that's a way of the trainer telling him, get out of there, you got the fight won. Gil, is it even possible that Tony deludes himself into believing that he's still got a shot at winning a decision here? I would have to say the fighter, yes, but the trainer should know better. The trainer should be telling him, you, you need a knockout to win this fight. Bill Miller hasn't said that at any point, has he? No, he hasn't. He said, we need this six minutes. The six minutes won't do him any good, in my opinion, uh, and on my scorecard. I think we're going to have... An exciting 12th round. Again, Jones is uh, killing the clock, not doing too much this round. Thudding an inside left against Tony's head there. Tony putting in the body work on the ropes, but it's probably too little too late. Crowd begins to try to lift the champion. This goes to show you that James has built a following in his three years as a world champion. Boy, there are a lot of people who bet on him. Jones nailed Tony with a solid left hook. And Tony wobbles just slightly against the ropes again. Look how calm Jones is in there. <laughs> Sending range punches, then hard punches. He's doing it all. in the Olympics. He may have been a little tired before Jones, but he's got a second win. He's right back in there now. And still, James Tony showing none of the desperation-style commitment that we all think would be necessary for him to salvage the fight. I have a 
We need it. Come on. We need this here. I got to have this here. We need it. There's no more tomorrow. Okay, bye. This is it. On your head. Okay? I want you to touch them, put them three or four point combinations on them and go. On your head. I'm on your head. Let me talk. The final round. Okay? Run, listen to me. Don't give him a chance. Don't give him a chance to take nothing, okay? Good. Oh, pick that piece of ice over there, Bill. Make sure it's going to play. Okay. Go get him. Give it to him. Give it to him. In the corner of the undefeated champion with the best record of any undefeated world titleist in the sport, there was silence for the last 20 seconds of that one-minute break between rounds. Nobody said to James, you must have a knockout to win the fight. Now here comes Tony with his last three minutes to try to get something done against aspiring super middleweight champion Roy Jones. Tony just takes so long to get off. He allowed Jones to escape. He's fainting, fainting, fainting. What is he waiting for? Good solid body punt by Jones. Smart stuff. Keep him in front. Keep him in front. At what point, Gil, does Jones simply try to stay away? Well, the way they told him in the corner that don't take any chances, but throw some good solid punches. I mean, I, I know if I was in this corner, I'd be saying, they just killed the clock. You got the fight won. I didn't do that too often, but. When the, when the guy's this far round. ahead, why take any kind of chance? Point to the break, stop it, stop it. I, I used to always tell Last my fighters, you, you have to win the last round, especially if you're near the guy's hometown. Yeah, but you wouldn't have told Jones tonight that he had to win this last round, would you? No, I would not have. As they say, he's, in my opinion, break, there's, there's no way they could take it away from him. Spectacular display by Roy Jones. He continues to step in and fire the left hook from time to time. And Tony, simply not busy enough to be building toward the climax he needs. He just can't get off. Can't get off. He's, the, the movement has been puzzling him all night long. Big right hand by Jones. Right on the button. One minute to go. Big left hook by Jones. Yet another one. Right, right, right. These are solid punches, which means that Tony has to have a chin of granite. Punching it out. Break, break. The sand is running out of the clock come for on, James work, Tony. Work, work, work. More than break, six years ago, Roy Jones Jr. was victimized by what most observers called the worst decision in the history of amateur boxing. It robbed him of an expected gold medal at the Olympic Games in Seoul in 1988. He's waited all this time to regain center stage. And now tonight, in the biggest fight of his career, against a man regarded by many as the most skilled champion in the sport, Roy Jones has been every bit as dominant as he was that day in Korea so long ago. the kind of fighter that James Tony has been over the last year and a half that's just a terrific performance by Roy Jones yes it is and uh, you know they we had mentioned about putting on all that weight and I was told that he had done that in quite a few fights but that eventually has to catch up with you Larry I don't think that uh, James Tony was on top of his game tonight I know Jones was great but Tony was not Tony tonight yeah but I'm I'm in Larry's corner on this one. Let's not harp on that too much because any harping on it takes away from a spectacular performance by Roy Jones, which, in my view, and, and in yours, Gil, answered just about every remaining question oh, about it. I, I thought he was absolutely great tonight. Again, he, he's a very unorthodox fighter. He does things his own way. I don't think he even knows what he's going to do, but, boy, it's effective. The fight plan for Jones was for a lot of power shots and very few jabs. He followed it to a tee.
Let's go to the ring announcer, Michael Buffer, for the official decision. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, we go to the scorecards. John Stewart scores the belt, 119 to 10. Glenn Hamada scores it, 117 to 110. And Jerry Roth has it, 118 to 109 for the winner by unanimous decision. And new super middleweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. First loss of James Tony's career, Roy Jones moves to 27 and 0, and based on tonight's performance, the sky's the limit. So in the end, it was the near whitewash we might have anticipated on the scorecards. Only one judge, Glenn Hamada, finding a way to give as many as three rounds to the champion, James Tony. Little punch stat numbers reflect Jones's dominance in the fight. You can see that he threw. 163 more punches, landed 128 more punches, and at a much higher percentage than Tony. And an interesting wrinkle. Roy Jones's fight plan was to dispense with the jab and throw power punches to make it more difficult for Tony to counter. Tony, far behind on points, eventually dispensed with the jab himself. The net result? Of all the punches thrown in the bout, 75% of them were power punches. Jabs were almost non-existent in the late rounds. After Roy Jones's overwhelming victory over Tony, Larry Merchant spoke to both winner and loser in the ring. What did you know personally about the difficulty he was having with weight? Well, I come from 178, sometimes 180 to make 160. That's a very tough thing to do and fight 12 rounds. Yeah. I'm a lot bigger than guys. Most times I'm a lot faster, but it's tough when it's fat. And I wasn't I wouldn't fat. I'd just be thick at 178 most of the time. But, uh, yeah, man. Thanks, baby. Hey, good work. Good work. Hey. Good work, baby. Sure. Hey. Hey. You all right? Hey, yeah. He is. Hey, yeah. Good work, baby. Be back. I'll be back. Yeah, I'll be back. James told me we'll be back. Watch out, like, every week. But, yeah, and, um, you know, it's just it's a tough thing to do. And uh, I commended him on how he made the weight, but I knew that he would be watched. I mean, you know, the weight would work. Well, how did that play into your plans, knowing that he would be weakened? Well, my hands are so fast, my feet are so quick, until all I had to do was box, move around the ring, box not taking on stupid chances, but I do like to fight, so I sat down with him a couple of times because he's a warrior, and to beat the champ, you got to beat the champ, so I sat down to show him that. All right, you, want, you wanted to prove not just that you were quick and strong, but that you had something inside you a few times in the fight. Is that what you're saying? That's right, exactly. That championship quality, that stuff that it takes to be a champion. I had to prove that I have that. Unlike other champions who, or other challengers who come in, challenge the champ, run from the whole night. I never run from nobody the whole night. Did he hurt you, daze you at all during the fight? No, but he's a solid puncher, but, uh, you know, my chin is real tough. Uh, I caught some good shots, but they didn't bother me at all. Did you feel you had hurt him? Seriously? Yeah, I hurt him a couple of times. I hurt him about three or four times in the fight. And uh, he has a strong chin, I expect, though, so I got to give him that. You've waited six years to get here, James. Does this make up for soul, finally? Right. Roy, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, this makes up somewhat. Well, uh, like I said, I just thank God I was healthy, able to get this squad without any defeats. Thank God my hands stayed healthy throughout the whole entire thing. And, uh, you know, James Tony was a wonderful champion. I stepped up, you know, took the challenge, had to do what I had to do. He'll be back. He's a great fighter. Was he just too quick for you? No, I wasn't at that. I was, like I said, I was tired. My weight, from weight loss and everything. I, I, ain't, I ain't got nothing to hold my head down, Bob. I ain't got nothing to hold my head down. Did having to take off so much weight before your fights finally catch up with you, Probably is that did. what you're saying? Probably did, but you know it don't matter. He didn't do nothing to me. You know, I'm out for good. I'll be back. I'm a great champ. I will be back. I will be back. Did he ever hurt you, for, particularly when he knocked no, you down? No, when I knocked down, I was off balance. I was ducking out the way of the punch and I fell. All right, we're going to try to run that up and see if you can describe. Now, here you were doing some posturing just before the, the knockdown. Explain to us. I'm ducking out the way. See? He pushed me right there. See it? It's a push. It's a push. It was a push. You see that? I wouldn't hurt nothing. I came back and forth. You never hit the canvas yourself, did you? Never. Never. It's in my gloves. But you must surely be disappointed after so many outstanding fights, undefeated, fighting so often, to be mastered in this way. I wouldn't master, you know, I just had a bad night. I'll be back. Like I said, I will be back. It's a good fight. Tip my hat off to him. 
The man want to fight fair square. I ain't got no excuse. He's a better man than that, but I will be back, though. That's a lot of heavyweight. So now we look ahead to the future. What will Roy Jones do as a champion at 168 pounds? What will James Tony do? You heard him suggest in the ring that his next fight would be as a light heavyweight with a 175-pound weight limit. Uh, Gil Clancy, obviously, Roy Jones looks ahead to some terrific marketability as a new superstar in the sport. But who's he going to fight? Well, I only see one guy out there that could make it interesting, and that's Gerald McClellan, and only because he can punch. But it's more likely that uh, Roy Jones Jr. will pitch another shutout. And then? He may have to move up and wait. I mean, I had Emil Griffith when he was welterweight champion. He ran out of guys to fight, had to move all the way up to middleweight. And I think that Jones may have to take that next step up and maybe fight a Virgil Hill for the light heavyweight championship. Wouldn't it be a shame to see him lose the chance to continue performing at this weight level where he is so obviously a natural spectacular talent? Well, that's boxing. I mean, that's what happens. If there's nobody out there for him, he will have to move up, make that sacrifice. And that's part of the business of boxing, and we'll see what happens with that in the months to come. But right now, a final word on Roy Jones's artistic presence in the ring against James Tony, from you, Larry. Well, I think all of us came here for more than the championship fight. This kind of a showdown brings something else out of us. Out of us. We wanted to collect a memory. Uh, there have been so many references in the last weeks to all those great middleweight dramas of the 80s. Hagler versus Leonard versus Hearns versus Duran. And we were looking forward to something like that tonight. I'm not sure if it was Tony's gluttonous ways that made him a glutton for punishment tonight. It seemed to me that no matter what James Tony did, he was going to get licked by Quick, by Roy Jones Jr.'s Quick. And perhaps that alone will stamp this event indelibly in our minds when we look back on Roy Jones' career. Indeed. The three of us will have more to say about boxing in just a moment. But right now, let's look ahead to some upcoming entertainment events here on HBO. The HBO original movie, coming in December, only on HBO. Back to the subject of boxing for a moment now as we look ahead to the next edition of World Championship Boxing here on HBO. It'll be December 3 as former heavyweight champion Riddick Bowe goes into the ring here in Las Vegas against young heavyweight contender Larry Donald, Gil Clancy. What challenge, if any, does Donald pose to Bowe? Well, Bowe is the challenge for Bowe. He has to get back into the condition that he was when he won the heavyweight championship of the world. Uh, against Larry Donald, uh, not a big puncher or anything, but he's a well-conditioned guy. And his manager, Robert Middleman, called me and said, definitely Donald will win the fight. We have Bo right where we want him. Robert Middleman managing the slick, quick former Olympian. He was a member of the United States Olympic team in Barcelona in 1992. And Larry Merchant, why would Middleman and the people around Donald believe that they have Bo right where they want him? Well, most people think the fight is premature for Donald. He's 17 and 0, but he hasn't fought any stiff opposition yet. But they just think they can jump on a Bo who is still depressed from losing his heavyweight championship uh, back to Evander Holyfield and being out of the heavyweight picture for now. And nobody knows whether he can get it again to get on the scale and be in shape. So that's why we're all thinking once again of gluttony, gluttons for punishment. And me personally, I'm thinking of the great fight novel and movie, Fat City. Revisited <laughs> as we go back to Riddick Bowe, who got an incomplete report card for his no contest appearance against Buster Mathis Jr. in late summer in Atlantic City. He'll be looking for a victory over Donald as he tries to angle toward another heavyweight championship challenge. And we remind you of an unusual starting time for that telecast. It'll be at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 6.30 Pacific Time, the 10 round heavyweight fight between Riddick Bowe and Larry Donald here on HBO. A final look back now at the events of November 18, 1994. Roy Jones becoming the new IBF super middleweight champion with his resounding unanimous decision victory over James Tony, punctuated by this semi-controversial third round knockdown. Tony's seat never really reaching the canvas, but all a part of the overwhelming performance by Jones, which made him an easy choice in fight. Turn to HBO for the show The Pros Watch Inside the NFL as hosts Lynn Dawson, Nick Buonacotti, and Chris Collinsworth are joined by Jimmy Johnson to take a complete look back and the first look ahead at all the action throughout the NFL, premiering Thursday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern and Pacific time. So for Larry Merchant, Gil Clancy, and Harold Letterman, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long from the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada.
The executive producer of HBO Sports is Ross Greenberg. Tonight's program was produced by Rick Bernstein and directed by Mark Payton. The associate producers were Steve Cohen, David Hoffman, and Adam Berger. Assistants to the producer, Artie Curry, Dave Leapson, Thomas Odelvelt, and Max Siegel. The production manager was John McCallum, and the technical supervisor, Bob Hunter. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions.